All right, so I'm going to give you a high-level overview of some of the main uh, components in, uh, in Sapling. So really, uh, you know, Sean gave you a great uh, intro uh, in terms of the stuff I'm going to talk about. Uh, the two main parts in Sapling are the, the, the multi-party computation for the parameters and the new uh, protocol. So what is next? Oh, this is next. So wh what do we need to do in this setup in SNARKs? Uh, a simplified way of, of uh, this was Tau in, uh, before it moved to Google Slides. Uh, what, what we need to do is compute a vector that looks like these, this, uh, g to the tau, g to the tau squared, up to g to the tau to the d, uh, where d is basically the circuit size you're proving stuff about. Uh, we need to compute such a vector for a tau that nobody knows. So, so this is uh, where the name powers of tau uh, comes from. Uh, uh, so, so how did we do this in, in Sprout? Um, so we had this protocol where, so you have a bunch of participants, each uh, commits to, each contributes some randomness to this tau that they construct together. In Sprout, uh, each participant committed in advance to their, like their share of the randomness, their share of this because this tau is what we call the toxic waste. If someone discovers tau, then they can forge a trillion Zcash. Uh, in the original protocol, everybody committed in advance to their part of tau. This was like important for the uh, security proof. But that created a situation where the participants in the ceremony, they needed to be defined in advance because they're committing to their share, and this this secret sensitive randomness, they needed to protect it for the whole duration of the ceremony, which was like, say, three, four hours times the number of participants. So the participants basically needed to kind of sleep with their computers or drive around Canada with their computer for uh, 24, 48 hours. And uh, this was when you had six participants. If you wanted 100, it would be driving around Canada and buying you know, plane tickets that you're not using for about half a year or, or a year. Uh, and then the, the, the new idea in Sapling is if we, you know, the secret tau, we add, we contribute to it with some public randomness, which seems, you know, silly, but if you do that in the end, you use what's called a random beacon to add some randomness to this tau, you can you know, do away with this uh, pre-selecting of participants, pre-committing to their randomness. And now you're just in this situation where participants can be chosen on the fly, and they just need to protect this secret randomness for 20, 30 minutes while their computer is doing this, this computation. Uh, and there's some work in progress that also shows that if you make some assumptions about your malicious adversary, uh, that you're kind of making in snarks anyways, you can, maybe you can do away both with the random beacon uh, and the, this pre-selecting pre of participants. Uh, and even if you continue to use the random beacon, it's you know, good to have independent evidence that, that things are, are secure. So, so that's about the, the, the ceremony, the multi-party computation for the snark parameters. Now let's talk about the, uh, the the, the protocol, the protocol for payments. So one thing you can easily see is that it's, it's more complicated. There's, if you look at you know, Sprout on one side versus Sapling on the other side, there's a lot more stuff. And uh, the principles for adding this stuff are you know, defense in depth and separation of authority. So, so what, what do I exactly mean? What is this uh, chain of authority in the, uh, the sapling key structure? So, so, you, so the master key is, what's, is the spending key. Uh, and the spending key is what does the final signatures on a transaction. And that's all it needs to do. 
no snark proving, just a, a digital signature. So because of that, you can think of that, this spending key, as being stored on some very lightweight uh, hardware, you know, hardware wallet that you're never connecting to the internet. So now from this spending key, you can generate, so these arrows are always uh, one way. So from the spending key, you can generate the, the proving key, or, or we call it proof authorizing key if you look at the spec, but I, I use big font, font so, uh, so, so, but you can't generate the spending key from the proving key, it's one way. Uh, the proving key is what generates the actual transaction uh, with the snark proof. So, so the way to think about it, uh, like Sean said, is you know this proving key, you store it on your, say your, on your laptop, that's connected to the, to the blockchain, you, you make your transaction with it, and you, you, know, you, you bring the transaction to be signed you know, on, on your hardware wallet that, that stores the spending key just for the final signatures of the uh, transaction. Uh, so from the proving key, you can derive a, a viewing key that lets you uh, see both incoming and outgoing transactions. Uh, there's a small caveat about whether you can always see the, you can always see the note going out. Whether you can see the recipient details, there's a small caveat about that that I'll, uh, you're welcome to ask me about that uh, later. And also from this uh, viewing key, you can go further and derive uh, an incoming viewing key only to see incoming transactions uh, to your address. So, so that's here this idea of you know, spend defense in depth and uh, a chain of authorities in, in these uh, different keys. Now, uh, uh, a really important component in Sapling that, uh, that Sean mentioned is diversified addresses. So the idea here is that you can, you can just store this one secret spending key, but actually from it, you can derive an unlimited amount, amount of, uh, of different unlinkable addresses. And so, so how does this work? So we're working here with some you know, group with a hard discrete log problem, some uh, elliptic curve group. Uh, and you, you, wanna, you wanna make a new address, so you just choose a random uh, element, uh, GD, uh, and your address is just gonna be GD, comma, GD, raised to the uh, incoming viewing key. And in the next slide, we'll see how this connects to the whole uh, key structure. Okay, so uh, I, I thought to give like a whole workshop about the, the key structure, but then I saw I could do it in, in three minutes. So I'll, I'll just do it here. Uh, so this is all oversimplified. I'm, you know, all of these keys, they actually contain more components. Uh, so the idea is that, right, the spending key at some secret field element or, or scalar or, or number, call it ASK. Uh, the, the proving key is simply the, uh, the spending, G to the spending key. And now the incoming, this incoming viewing key, it's just the hash of the proving key. All right, and now, so now connecting to what we said in the previous slide about diversified addresses. So what is a note or a coin gonna look like? So right, what is basically a note? It's an address and uh, the value of that note. And what is the address? It's one of these diversified addresses. So it's, it's gonna look like you know, GD comma GD to the uh, incoming viewing key. And there's, there's gonna be some value in, in the note. All right, and now, so now we wanna, like basically how do you spend such a note? So, so to, to spend such a note, I wanna you know, prove that I have the, the spend, the, I really have the spending key. Uh, but right, remember this is like the, the important point here. In my snark proof, 
I don't want to involve the spending key. So, so this light hardware wallet doesn't have to do a snark proof. So, so what, what do I do? Well, the idea is you, and also I, want to I don't want this proving key to be, uh, to, to be public, of course. So the idea is we're going to choose some uh, random uh, shift of the proving key. So, so, so we choose some, some random alpha, and we define rk to be ak times g to the alpha. And we publish this, this random shift of the, uh, the proving key. Uh, and now the, 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 the prover is going gonna, is gonna to basically do uh, two things. It's going to, I don't see the edge of the slide. I don't, I don't know if, how far you can see. Uh, so it's, it's going to prove that, you know, so there, there's this note. It, it's going to show that, yeah, the, the proving key I have is really the proving key for this note. So what does that mean? It means that th this AK that I know, if you, if you hash it, then the second component, and what, so what you get, call it IVK. So the second component in the node is really the first component in the node raised to this IVK. So the prover shows that, you know, the proving key I have, it's really the proving key for this node. And it's also going to show that this RK I published, it really is, you know, some, it's a group, everything's a random shift of everything else, but, but it proves that, yeah, this thing I published, it's really a random shift of the proving key, and I know the random shift. I know this, this alpha. Uh, all right, so, so, all, so far so, so good, but now we, we haven't really shown it, that we know the spending key of this note. And again, the point is we want to do this outside of uh, the snark proof. But what, what we have achieved is we've published this RK that everybody agrees by now is really a shift of the, of the proving key. Now, now we're using here some signature scheme, just the Schnorr scheme, where the, the private keys for signing are just the discrete log of the public key. So, so, so what is the private key corresponding to, to RK? It's just, you know, our spending key uh, plus alpha, ASK plus alpha. Uh, I don't know if you can see that last line. Uh, but now the idea is, OK, so this, the, 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 the hardware wallet that has the spending key, it can sign all this transaction with ASK plus alpha. And this is an interesting uh, thing about the, the Schnorr scheme, that you can prove that it's resistant to forgery also with respect to randomization. So right, classical forgery, there's some uh, secret key, and you know, being non-forgeable means if you don't have the secret key, you can't sign messages uh, with this key. But you can show sh you can show Schnorr is also uh, resistant to randomization, meaning that you also cannot sign you can't sign with ASK if you don't have it. But you also can't sign with ASK plus alpha for any alpha. Uh, if, if you, like, you can't give alpha and a signature under ASK plus uh, alpha. All right, uh, so how much time do I have, by the way? 10? That's, I must have gone much faster than I. All right. Uh, so uh, some crypto nuances in, in uh, security proof. Uh, so what it, when you, right, you want to uh, prove that a system like uh, uh, Zcash is secure, what's kind of the natural, a natural statement you would, you would want to prove? You, you would want to maybe prove something like uh, whenever someone manages to spend the note, then that means uh, he had the, or she had the, the secret key corresponding to, to this note. And if you heard a little about snarks, uh, you know, this would kind of seem to be the, the kind of thing that uh, snarks would, would let you do, would let you prove. Uh, but, but like an interesting nuance is that you can't exactly do that, at least not uh, directly. Uh, and, and the reason is that 
kind of the malicious prover doesn't act in a bubble. It acts in this environment that it potentially you know, gets useful information from. Uh, and this has to do with snark definitions that I'll get to in, in the next and uh, last slide. So something odd and interesting that happens both in our an analysis now uh, and the one, if you look at the zero cache paper, is, is when you actually analyze these things, you have to look at as the adversary and the honest party or the environment as one party for, for the purposes of, of arguing something against the snark, about the snark. Um, and so, so in this context, it's interesting to, to look at different, you know, snark properties. So uh, the, the most basic property is, is soundness. So soundness, it means that if I prove a claim, then it's true. Like, the system is sound in the sense that if someone manages to prove a claim, it, it means that, that it's true. Now, the next thing that is kind of the standard thing in, in snarks is what we call knowledge uh, soundness. That's the K in, in, the, uh, in the snark, which means that uh, if I prove a claim from scratch, you know, without any help, then I know a witness uh, for this for the truth of, of, of this claim. Uh, but again, right, when you think about it, what's going on in like a system like, uh, like Zcash, you have someone trying to forge transactions and, and he's not, they're not necessarily doing things from scratch. They're getting all this, you know, other people are doing transactions. There's all this information from the environment that, you know, maybe it's useless, maybe not. And this is where uh, uh, simulation extractability uh, comes in that uh, you can think of it as saying, if, if I prove a claim uh, even after seeing uh, other proofs also that maybe I chose, uh, then even that, if I make a new proof after seeing a lot of other proofs, still, it means I know a witness for this proof. In, in the context of Zcash, I know the secret key of the note that I'm, that I'm spending. So this is uh, perhaps something for you know, the, the future of, of, of Zcash to move from a knowledge sound uh, snark uh, to uh, a simulation extractable snark. Uh, and, and there's nice works of that of Jens Groff and Mary Mahler, and there, there's a work of, of Sean and I that uh, gives a little lo longer proofs but has better proving time. So that's something that we might do, move to a simulation extractable snark in some future ver version of, of Zcash, but what, what's also interesting when I, you know, going over this uh, kind of trying to prove sapling secure is actually in sapling, you know, you don't just see other proofs, you see other uh, signatures also. You see there's a lot of stuff going around that the adversary can potentially use. And, you know, this might, you know, at some point in the future of, of Zcash or, the, or this stuff, it, it, it might, you know, bring, uh, relate us to, to, this, to this kind of these issues of universal uh, composability that, uh, that universal co composability basically says, you know, and this is kind of what you want when you have an adversary that uh, is acting in some environment with a lot of information that, you know, if I manage to prove a claim after seeing other proofs, other signatures, other whatever, still you can say that I myself know a witness uh, for that uh, claim. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so that, that's all, all I had, so thank you very much.